Hello and welcome to my Learn With Me Mini Frick series. This is episode 19, Digital Melody. So first, what is Learn With Me? Well, Learn With Me is a series where you follow my end-to-end -end process learning to get the best out of a synthesizer. In this case, it is the Arturia Mini Freak. So far, we've discussed all the features of the synthesizer. We've designed a number of sounds, hopefully covering a bit of the breadth of what's available. The title I've given myself for this sound is Digital Melody, and in my head I'm thinking something you'll play with the arpeggiator that has maybe a bit of a, a chiptune vibe going on. So, let's first create an init patch. So when I think chiptune, I think the bass oscillator is going to be something relatively straightforward, so I think the basic wave is a good choice. So this is a pretty basic waveform, and what I now want to do is I want to filter it. So the way that I'm going to filter it, not in the sense of a filter, I guess process is probably a better word, is I want to run it through this destroy. Now destroy gives us access to a wave folder, interesting timbre, decimate, again an interesting timbre. Finally, bit crush. So I think the bit crush here is what's going to give us the tone that we want. Let's try. So you can hear that we move from something that is more of a saw wave to something that's more of a square wave, which I think is appropriate here. So when I think of digital, I'm thinking of something that's going to be plucks. When I think of, for example, the old um, Nintendo, the synthesizer would not be able to play a chord, but would rather play a sequence of notes in quick a succession to simulate a chord, so these would be very plucky. So we have a sound going on there, I think. Normally I would be looking to filter this, and I think I will filter it, but I'm going to filter it only to a small degree. So I think that already has something of a chip tune vibe. You'll notice that I've left this in polyphonic mode. The reason that I've left it in polyphonic mode is though the original synthesizer may have been monophonic and though I'm not going to play chords, I'm going to use arpeggios. I think it's interesting if it's possible for one note to run over into the next. So I'm going to turn on the ARP. The ARP's running. and Let's play. Let's see, maybe. Oh, probably hold that. Okay. So, when I need to talk a little more clearly, I think I'm going to turn the cutoff down. this running slower as well. When we're doing the final performance, I'm going to speed the tempo up. So let's think about what parameters we might like to be able to adjust here. One, let's see what happens if we add 
a bit crusher. So the bit crushing on the output is interesting, but probably not what we need, I don't think. Let's see if any of the other... Maybe the EQ is going to be a better choice here. So what do I think of when I think digital? I think quite a lot of that high end. So we can think of that as a bit of a tilt EQ going on here. And that makes me think of the first thing that I would like to modify, which would be, I think I'm going to use one of the macros to tilt that EQ. So if we look at these amounts that I've got, let's say that's minus three, and minus six, those are decibels, and this one is three. So if I go to macro assign, this macro, so this, I'm trying to undo what's done here. Unfortunately, the scales are not super obvious. So what I'm gonna do is exit this, and I'm gonna see. So this is going from six to minus 15. So let's say that's, 21, so roughly 5 per decibel. So if I've got 9 multiplied by 5 is 45. So this one is supposed to go down by 45, and the other one is supposed to go up by 45. The base, which is on the time knob, is going to go up by 45, and this is going to go down by 45. So let's listen to this. So you can hear, we have a brighter variant and a darker variant. Now I would say maybe we want to adjust the envelope here, but we always have access to the, to the gate control. So I think rather than wasting macro controls on that, I'm not going to do that. And I think maybe what I'll do as well, given that I've got this EQ thing going on, getting darker, what I'll do is I'll close the filter a little bit here. I'll make the macro open the filter a little. So you can hear I have a different timbre going on each end of that. And the other thing I think I might like to do with that tombrel ship is see if there's another one of the wave parameters I'd like to adjust. So let's just listen to them. So I quite like moving probably roughly 30 plus 30 on the to that. So let's listen to that. So that's my core tombrel change. And I think what I'm going to do with the other parameter here is I'm going to do effects changes. So let's go over to that section. The first effect is already this, this EQ, which I think is doing its job as it should. digital synth, we wouldn't have a send for a delay, the delay would be an insert, so I'm going to have the delay be an insert. So I've got that running in triplets. I 
chocolate works for me. So this is fully dry. So I want that to come into about 40, so let's do this. better. 16 doublets. I think reverb, and I think I'm going to have that reverb come in, but maybe I'm going to try and adjust the size of the reverb as well. So let's first get the type. And as I said about the delay, it felt like an insert was more appropriate. I think the same is true of a reverb. So I'm going to run it from almost completely dry, then I'm going to tune it by ear. So, the wet dry, let's put that all the way up. another way of interacting with this sound beyond just modifying the panel and beyond this gate that I mentioned already. Which already gives us, I would say, quite a lot to work with, but that is the mod wheel. So I'm going to turn the mod wheel up and then we're going to do some more timbre shaping using the mod wheel. But let's think what we would like for the mod wheel. So one, Vibrato does make sense to me, but that's way too much for Vibrato. So Vibrato is fast, so can we Vibrato depth. on the mod matrix. I haven't used the mod matrix at all so far. Maybe I'll close the filter a little bit with that. I think I'm going 
gonna have the white boulder. That's five, so let's grab that parameter. And we're going to have the decimate go up plus ten. tempo a bit higher to perform this. Okay, so I'm going to try and do a quick performance on this and then we shall move on. Maybe.
Okay, so hopefully that gave a bit of a chiptune vibe combined with some more traditional synthesis and then combined with some more modern approaches to use of effects. I think this is the last of the sound design episodes I'm going to do, so we're probably going to come back next time and I'll give you my final thoughts on the synthesizer and uh, say goodbye for the series. I hope you've enjoyed the series, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Most importantly, thank you very much for joining me today and goodbye. <laughs>